And now Brother Andy Rogers will come forward to read to us from the Gospel of Luke. We start at verse 26 and we go through to 45, but the text is only 39 to 45. Luke 1, Luke 1, 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at the statement, and kept wonder, pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with, God, with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now at this time, Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among, young, among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. So far God's word. Congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, often in this life, even Christians go through times of doubt, doubting that Jesus is that Son of God who came in human flesh and in human soul to save us from sin. Well, in God's gracious loving kindness, he has given many places in the Bible which confirm to you and me that Jesus was, that Jesus still is, who he claimed to be. In fact, our text for this sermon is one of those passages that does that for you and me. And so, do you doubt Older people, when you get older and frail, do you doubt that God is near you, that Jesus is real? What about you, younger people? And what about you, boys 
and goes. Do you sometimes doubt in Jesus Christ? Well, then read again this account of Mary's visiting of Elizabeth. You see, the angel Gabriel had just visited Mary, had just given her the message from God that God had chosen her to become the mother of Jesus Christ, that she was going to expect the Son of God in human body and soul. But that was not all that Gabriel told her. No, he also gave her a second bit of news. Yes, he also told Mary that her cousin Elizabeth too, despite her advanced age, was pregnant with a miracle baby already six months. So here's a question. Why did Gabriel tell Mary also the second bit of news? The news about her cousin's pregnancy. My brother and sister, look, there may be several reasons why he told her that. But here is the most obvious one, and that is to prompt Mary to go to Elizabeth and see for herself that Elizabeth, despite her age, was indeed expecting a child just as Gabriel had said. So, a very good reason why Gabriel told Mary about Elizabeth's pregnancy was that so would Mary go to Elizabeth and have her own faith confirmed. Yes, that Mary would have confirmed for herself what Gabriel had just told her. Yes, so that Mary would go and, as it were, compare notes with her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, this is what the angel of God told me. What did he tell you and your husband? Wow, Elizabeth, and now I see for myself that you are already in your sixth month, just as he had said. Oh, Elizabeth, now I don't have a single doubt anymore. And now it's confirmed for me that what the angel told me will happen also to me. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm so utterly happy and blessed. My brother and sister, see why Gabriel shared Elizabeth's news with Mary? No wonder Mary gladly and and promptly undertook that long journey from Nazareth in the north to Hebron in the south, a journey of 160 Three kilometers if you were to do it by car today. My brother and sister, I agree. There may be other messages in our text. But here is the main message for you and me. Stop doubting that Jesus is who he claimed to be. Stop doubting. Look at the evidence. Yes, look at the confirmation given in our text. Confirmation given to Mary, but also to you and me. That what the angel Gabriel told her was divine truth. And so our text allows for us the following three sermon points. Confirmation one. Confirmation 2 and Confirmation 3. So here is Confirmation 1, leaping. Verse 41 tells us that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. My brother and sister, this same word used for leap here The Bible also used that very same word to describe that struggling which went on between Jacob and Esau in their mother's womb. 
also in Psalm 114, which tells us that when Israel moved out of Egypt, the mountains and the hills skipped for joy. Now, some might say, I, you know, what Elizabeth felt was just the ordinary kicking of a six-month-old baby in the womb. But let's not forget, first of all, that this baby John was, as the angel had promised his father nine months or six months earlier, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. Secondly, let's not forget verse 41, which also says that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit at this very instant, which means through the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth understood the leaping of the baby inside of her as a leaping because little John the six-month-old fetus in her womb became aware of the nearby presence of the Messiah. After all, Mary's pregnancy had already started. For Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, says to Mary in verse 42, Blessed is the fruit of your womb. So inside Mary's womb, there was already the human beginnings of Jesus Christ. And it is because of this nearby presence of fetus Messiah that fetus John leaped for joy. And this was all triggered when fetus John heard the voice of Mary, mother of Messiah. Well, does not this remind you and me of the words John the Baptist would say some 30 years later when he would introduce Christ to the crowd there at the Jordan? He says, the friend of the bridegroom, me, John, who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Same thing 30 years later. So what do we see? Well, we see that the herald of Jesus Christ, yes, John, was while he was still in his mother's womb, already heralding the coming of Christ. He was already witnessing to and pointing out the identity of Jesus. Thus, dear Mary, dear brother and sister, dear young man, dear boy and girl, do you need confirmation that what the angel Gabriel told Mary is true and that it would be fulfilled? Well, here you have it. Through John's leaping in Elizabeth's womb, the Holy Spirit is saying to Mary and to you and me, were you doubting my promise? Well, look, here is confirmation for you that what I have told Mary, that is true. Well, that's confirmation one. That's point one. That's leaping. Here is point two. The fruit of your womb. My brother and sister, before Mary had the opportunity to share with Elizabeth what Gabriel had told her there in Nazareth, yes, instantly and already with Mary's first hello, Elizabeth already knew. Yes, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, already knew that Mary was in the early stages of expecting Messiah. And so that's why Elizabeth was able to prophesy straight away the following words. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
confirmation, Mary. Indeed, without Mary telling her, Elizabeth already knew. Well, here are two things to note. Firstly, notice how Elizabeth is not saying, Blessed are you above women. No. Although Mary was highly blessed, we should not place her above others, lest we worship her as do Roman Catholics. By the way, did you know that the words of the Roman Catholic song, Ave Maria, come from a selection of words from this very passage which we have read? Yes, some of the angel Gabriel's words and some of Elizabeth's words, they were combined in this song. So if I translate the words of the first stanza of Ave Maria from Latin into English, this is what they say. Greetings, Mary, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Gabriel's words to Mary. And now Elizabeth's words. Blessed are you among many, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Well, in 1825, the music composer Franz Schubert wrote the most beautiful melody, which became the most popular melody for the Ave Maria. And over many years, as I listened to that beautiful version of the Ave Maria, I was always torn in two. I was joyful and I was sad. Yes, I was joyful about this most beautiful melody that brings tears to the eyes. But I was sad that the words were sung as a prayer in worship of Mary. We don't worship Mary. I want to repeat that Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, did not elevate Mary above other women or other human beings. She did not say, blessed are you above women. Elizabeth said, blessed are you among women. Why did Elizabeth place Mary not above, but as among women? Well, because Elizabeth's next words explain that it's not all about Mary, but it's all about the fruit of her womb. That's about Jesus Christ, as the Ave Maria sings, it's about the fructus ventris, the fruit of your womb. He, that one, should be reverenced. Wow, again, confirmation, Mary. Elizabeth's words are totally in sync with what Gabriel had told Mary. Mary, behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Why? Well, he will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his David Father, and his kingdom will be forever. My brother and sister, see, see how Elizabeth confirms for Mary what Gabriel had said. See that it's all about him who would be born from Mary's womb, and not about Mary. Well, that was point two, confirmation to the fruit of your womb. Here is the last point, confirmation number three, the words, mother of my Lord. My brother and sister, Mary, my brother and sister Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. So they would have known one another for many, many years. And they would have met on several other occasions in their lives. For example, at great Jewish religious festivals in Jerusalem. But this time, 
Elizabeth's words show that she now saw more than a relative in Mary. For she calls Mary mother of my Lord. So what is she doing? Well, is she not doing the same as what David once did when he prophesied the coming Messiah? Remember, this is what David in the Spirit said in Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Clearly, Elizabeth knew that just as Gabriel had said, Mary was expecting Messiah. Jesus is that long prophesied and long waited for Messiah. Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of God's people. Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, says, the mother of my Lord. And may I remind you that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, no one can really say Jesus is Lord except through the Holy Spirit in his or her heart. Why Elizabeth could say, Mother of my Lord. See? Another confirmation, and a real strong one too, confirmation for Mary and for you and me who are hearing these accounts. Well, as said, the main purpose of Mary's visit to Elizabeth was to have confirmed for Mary and for you and me that what Gabriel said was true. Indeed, the message of our text is, stop doubting that Jesus of Nazareth, that Mary's child, is who he claimed to be. Trust God who said that Jesus is Messiah, the Savior of God's people, that he is the Son of God. Of course, my brother and sister, our text, Luke 1, verse 39 through to 45, that's not the only passage in the Bible confirming Jesus' identity. Here are a few more such passages, and you will remember them. Firstly, remember the time when Jesus forgave a paralytic his sins, and when the critics queried whether Jesus had the authority to forgive sins, for only God could forgive sins, Jesus then proved to them his identity, that he was God. And so this Jesus did by healing the paralytic in front of all the eyes of the critics. Confirmation. Then there was the time when some people doubted that Jesus was the Son of God. So he said to them, What would you say if one day you see the Son of Man ascend to where he came from? Of course, then eventually, before the eyes of witnesses, Jesus, without rockets fastened to his body, did ascend to heaven so again, everyone there found confirmation that this is the Son of God. Not to forget what happened the moment he died on the cross. The symbolic tearing of the curtain in the temple, not from the bottom where human hands could tear it and could reach, but from the top out of reach of human hands. This was accompanied by the opening of the graves of the saints at that same time, as well as by the Roman centurion's exclamation, truly, this was the Son of God. Confirmation. Of course, there was also Resurrection Sunday, when he who was dead rose alive, 
and was seen by many and varied witnesses. Mary Magdalene, the apostles, the two Emmaus travelers, and more than 500 people later on. Then the risen Christ appeared even to a Christ-hater, to Saul or Paul, who was at first a persecutor of Christians. My brother and sister, I'm sure we get the picture. The Bible is full of incidents that confirm for us that Jesus really is the Messiah. And our text, Luke 1, verse 39, 45, as one of those gems in that string of confirmation passages. Well, all indications are Mary already believed when Gabriel told her those good news. However, it's also clear that God in His grace granted Mary this visit to Elizabeth. A visit which confirmed for Mary and us the truth of what Gabriel had said. Look, is that not why Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, was able to conclude her song to Mary with, Blessed is she who believed. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the law. My brother and sister, young man, young lady, boys and girls, blessed are also you that you would believe the word of the Lord and believe that he will come again as he has said. And will we all be ready? Amen.